Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. Yes, greetings, 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 fam. Coming up to that time, that time here, here, here in the season. Reason for the season. The second of the three times in the year, according to HaTorah, where all the males of Yisrael are to appear in the place that Yahuwah, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, has set His name now. From the first right, pattern and type, we look at the sanctuary. So the place will be the sanctuary three times in the year, speaking about the Passover, Pesach season with the three feasts. And then from first fruits, we are to count seven Shabbats, seven Sabbaths complete. So from the morrow, right after the Shabbat, and this is all found in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 23. In chapter 23, we get the details of the Mo'adei Yahweh, Mo'adei Yahuwah, the Mo'adei, Mo'adei, Mo'adim, the Mo'adim, the Mo'ed. Mo'ed is the appointments, the appointments, the meeting, right, the appointment, the feast, the festivals. This word is an interesting word. We have it in the sense of the Ohel Mo'ed. Ohel is a tent, Mo'ed, the tent of meeting, right, that appointed place. Right now, in the Brit Chadasha sense, right, in the new, the renewed covenant sense, right, Bashem Yeshua HaMushiach, right, in the name of the King of Kings Christ, the King of Kings Christ, Jesus Christos Getachin, the Emmanuel, for I and I and I, we are in the new covenant sense, so therefore, from the old covenant sense, or the Brit HaYeshana, what we have in Leviticus, how do we fulfill? Here, the fourth of the seven appointments, the seven feasts. So we have the seven feasts in Leviticus chapter 13. We've gone through this before. We can go through it again. But just here, just to be brief right here, as we are coming to the fulfillment of the sixth. Right, We've been counting the Shabuas, the Sabbaths, right, from the time of the Bikurim. And Bikurim we count from the first day, right, Judaically, Hebraically, counting from the first day. Right, so that first day corresponding with what, according to the children of the Ethiopians, right, and those faithful ones and ones in the Orthodox, the true church, and the professing Ethiopian Orthodox Church, they have it on the Sunday, the previous Sunday, previously about six Shabbats ago, six weeks ago, we had what's called Fasika, but more correctly, the first day resurrection. Right, that first day resurrection of Yeshua Hanotri of Yenazaretu Iesus of Jesus of Nazareth is the fulfillment in the Brit Chadasha in the Adis, Adis Kidan, the Hadish Kidan in the New Covenant for first fruits. So Yeshua HaMushiach, he is the first, right, the first of the, you could say, the ones to be raised he's the first one raised from the dead ones right and and he is that first fruit right of that which we as the habarim as the achim the brothers you could say as the disciples right those 50 days later so we get the template of the upper room the upper room of zion Right in Acts of the Apostles. So we can go into more of this in detail, especially in this Shabuah coming up, since here, here, here for the TJIF. So we're recording this in 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 the time of um here. This is June third, twenty twenty two, according to the um the Gregorian. So we have about ten got about ten or so days. Right. So we're looking forward to the twelfth, right, and the Monday in particular, right? The Monday. So according to the New Covenant, we say churches, right? Especially the Orthodox churches and the Ethiopian, the sister, the sister churches, the Oriental churches, right? It is usually that Sunday is regarded as the Sabbath of the Christians. Now we know the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the Israelites of Ethiopia kept both the seventh day Shabbat, right? Corresponding to what's called um, Saturday as well as that first day, the first day resurrection, corresponding to Ehud. So usually amongst the Orthodox churches and even the, some of the um, Oriental churches, they would observe 
by what's called Pentecost. Pentecost is the Koine Coptic Greek word for the 50th day. So we're commanded to count seven Shabbats. Right? Shabbats. The scripture is very specific. We can go to the scripts in Leviticus. Right? Because it says, see that you do all things according to the, the pattern that was shown to the Moshe was instructed that in the mount. Now when we compare now Ha Torah with the epistle to the Hebrews, here is where the real enlightenment, the real fulfillment comes in. So how do we observe basically right here, this little vlog right here is, well, how do we observe first fruits, right? And how do we observe the harvest, right? The harvest and the first fruits. As we mentioned, Leviticus chapter 23. Some of the previous vids, we go into more detail. Here we'd like to focus on the fruit, right? And counting the growth of the, the fruit as we would count the Omer. See, in the first type, the we say the temporal type, right? Even the terrestrial type, the natural type. The second, the new covenant type is the spiritual type. So first we have the physical type. The law, Ha Torah, it says, when ye be come into the land, right? And now we also have the parables concerning the seed, right? So we have to understand some of the basic precepts, some of the basic teaching, right? What is that first of all the proverbs or parables? This points us to Matthew chapter 13. For one to receive it in the new and the living way, right? So here we're speaking about the fruit, right? The fruit of the Spirit, right? The fruit of the Spirit, right? He is risen. He is risen, right? So from that resurrection, right, of the Moshiach, Yeshua, Ye Nazaretu Iesus, Yeshua Ha Notri, right, Jesus of Nazareth, Ha Moshiach, Yeshua, Yeshua, Ha Moshiach, right, those of us, we the black Jews of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, right, so we be Yehudi, right, Yehudim by nature as the Apostle Paulos, Paul. Rab Shaul, as Rabbi Saul, the apostle to the Gentiles, our brother Paul says, We be Yehudim, we be Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Goyim, of the Gentiles. So, this is why when we're pointing to the Brit Hadash, the new covenant, while we make reference as the Messiah, Robeno, Yeshua did, right, to Ha Torah, right, to the Torah, right. See that we do all things according to the pattern. And as the King Messiah, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, he says his advice to all is to fulfill, right? To fulfill the Ten Commandments, to fulfill the Esaret HaDibarim, and we can only fulfill it, right, in spirit and in truth. So here is a season where we are counting the growth of the crop. But there's a twofold application to this. There's a twofold application. Let's bring this up right here, here, here again. So here, pointing to the New Covenant Scripture, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 right, to 23. Right? Verses 22 to 23. So here, briefly, let's, first of all, just point to the contrast here in case ones and ones who are really interested, because this is very, very important. Right, that we understand the twofold, the twofold, the two truths, right? The two truths. There's the phi cycle, the physical, right? And then there is the meta phi cycle. So here, let's put first, right? Let's put first, right? Let's put first fruits, right? First fruits, first fruits. So it will come up first fruits, right? I don't know whether it come up as two words or one word. Let's put this right here, first fruits, and let's go to Leviticus, Leviticus chapter, okay, chapter, all right, it didn't put that there, so it must be as one word. Give me one moment, brothers and sisters, right here, first fruits, first fruits, first fruits, here we go, okay, it doesn't come up, right, but let's go right here, oh, my bad, I was thinking of chapter 13, actually it's chapter 23, my bad. Boom, it was right there. Okay, here, here, here. Here's what it says right here. It says, Leviticus 23 and 10, it says, Speak, right, to the Bnei Yisrael, the sons of Israel, the Israelites, and say to them, When ye be come into the land. Now, land in the first type, of course, the physical type is the land, land. Like right? we said, the natural land. 
land in the new covenant sense, the Brit Chadasha type, right, is our consciousness, right, our consciousness, right, our consciousness. This is where Matthew chapter 13 and the parable of the sower, right, the parable that Robenu Yeshua, right, Getachni Yesus gave us concerning the sower and the seed, right, so what kind of ground? We have to prepare the ground. The ground is our conscience, our consciousness, preparing the ground for that seed. What is the seed? Right? The seed is the word of the kingdom. The seed is the word of the kingdom. You find that as well in Matthew chapter 13. Right? Robain, I and I rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Shua HaMoshiach, perfectly brings that out right here. So this is the point of reference, right? So we have the Hebrew two truths. In other words, even as the words themselves in Hebrew, first of all, have the physical, the natural, right, application. You can say the outer application, right, the earthly application, right. Then we have the metaphysical, we say the inner, the higher, the spiritual application, right. So from the outer, right, to the inner, right, going into the innermost of the innocence, entering into having that right in the new covenant to enter into that holy place in Jah Grace. So when it says here in Leviticus, this is the pattern, Leviticus 23 and 10, when ye be come into the land that I give to you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye, then y'all shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits, see, the first fruits of your harvest, of your harvest to Ha Kohen to the Kohen, and he shall wave the sheaf. Now the sheaf is what we know as the Omer, the Omer, that sheaf of wheat, right? That sheaf of wheat, right? Now here we're speaking of the first fruits, which is the third, right, of the three feast festivals of Yahuwah of Jehovah that we find in Leviticus chapter 23. So there are seven feasts; they occur in three seasons. In the first of the three seasons. Pesach, Passover, occur three feasts. We have Passover, we have the seven days of unleavened bread, and then we have first fruits. Now, first fruits correspond with Ha'adon, Kam, Kam, Ha'adon, Ha'adon, the Lord, the Master is risen. Right? That first day, resurrection of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, that first day, among the Gentiles, they call it Sunday. But we Hebrews never refer to the first day as Sunday, always as the Yom HaRishon, the Ehud, or that first day. Basically the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, the seventh day, that day was given the Shabbat. So here it says, and he shall wave the sheaf, Lifne Yahuwah. So all of this occurs in Pesach, in the first of the three times, to be accepted for you. On the morrow after, the morrow went after HaShabbat, after the Sabbath. So we know the Sabbath is the Saturday, right? Called the Saturday among the Gentiles in the Gregorian sense. We know it's the seventh day for us. So that morrow after would be on the first day. Check the first day. So that's a first day observation. So still we don't worship on Sunday. That word sound is wrong, right? In the beginning is the word, but it's the first day. Right after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So when was Ha'adon Yeshua risen? Right, when Maria Magdalene went to the tomb with the other woman early, right in the morning of the first day, and he was risen. So thus, here's where the New Covenant Scripture speaks of Ha Moshiach Yeshua speaks of Christos Christ as the first fruit. Right, and then it speaks about us. Right, as those who would be who will come after him. So he's the first of the brethren, right? And then we come after him, right? We're that fruit that come after him. We're resurrected after him. He is the first, he is the type. We conform to him, right? As that image, right, of the Bain Elohim Chaim, the son of the living power. So on the morrow after the Shabbat, the priest. Ha Kohen shall wave it. So this here corresponds with the resurrection of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Then it speaks about the burnt offerings that shall be made. Right? Then we go down right here. And here it says in verse 15, do we get the instructions for Shabuot? So in Hebrew we know the harvest is Shabuot. Modern Hebrew they'll say Shavuot. Shavuot, ancient Afro-Asiatic Afro-Shemitic pointing, Shabuot. 
a week, seven days is called a Shabua, Shabua, Shabua. Modern Hebrew to say Shavua, Shavua, modern Ashkenazi, Eastern European influence Hebrew, Shavua, ancient Afro Semitic Hebrew, Shabua, Shabua. So Shabuot, Shabuot is weeks. Because we're commanded to count seven. Let me just read this here. And ye shall count to you from the morrow after the Sabbath. Remember, we just touched on that. From the day that ye y'all brought the sheaf, that omer, that first fruit, the first of the resurrection, right? The first, right? Of the wave offering. That corresponds to Moshe Yeshua's resurrection, right? Seven Sabbaths. So from that first day that the Gentiles call Sunday, we know as a Yom HaRishon, the Ehud, the first day, right? We now must count seven Shabbats. When I say seven Shabbats, we go from the first day to the seventh day, that's one Shabbat. Do the same thing seven times. Shall be complete, right? So this brings us here, right, here in the season, right, even to the preparation, right, for the harvest, Right, for the outpouring, the feast of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Memphis Kedus, in that upper room. The upper room in Acts of the Apostle was the upper room of Zion. Verse 16, even to the morrow, after the seventh Shabbat, shall ye number 50 days. Here's where we get the new covenant, Pentecost, 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 which basically in the Koina Coptic Greek means 50 days. Remember, seven times seven is what? Counting seven Shabbat. Seven times seven. Let's do the math. Seven times seven is 49. And the morrow after, right, that seventh, that's the next day. So you add one to 49. 49 plus one is 50. And ye shall offer a new, it says meat offering. This is the bad translation, the mincha, mincha. Mincha, as you can see right here, is a gift, a tribute, an offering, a present, right? Notice where it says grain offering. You see where it says grain offering? Let's scroll it down here. The word is a noun feminine, mincha. Some say minka. But notice what it says, from an unused root, meaning to apportion, that is to bestow, a donation, euphemistically a tribute, specifically a sacrificial offering look at the open parenthesis usually bloodless voluntary why because it's a grain offering it's a grain offering remember we're counting the growth of the barley at first and then we're counting the growth of the wheat right in the natural sense so we have two truths first we have the natural sense the earthly type as Robeno Yeshua HaMoshia said if I show you earthly examples and you don't get it how can you get the heavenly examples if i show you natural examples how you're going to get and you don't get it how you're going to understand the supernatural so even with the physical examples we have now in the brit hadasha the new covenant we have the metaphysical the more spiritual type so we have the grain offering right here right and then it goes on and say right here and you shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of two tenth deals they shall be a fine flour so this emphasizes that there's no debtors here but it's fine flour they shall be baking with leaven so what's different about the second of the three times in the year speaking about harvest is that leaven is commanded so here we present basically loaves of bread two loaves of bread after the wheat we counting the growth of the wheat so in the natural sense we count the growth of the wheat after the 50 days we bring forth before we even eat any of it Ourself first we must offer to the landlord to Yahweh by right? Jehovah through the order of the priest We're just breaking down here the pattern so that ones hopefully can overstand now the, the new and the living way Right as the epistle to the Hebrews say that new and that living way that he has consecrated for us through the veil That is to say his flesh The new and the living way that he has consecrated for us for I and I through the veil through the veil and that is to say his flesh bringing that out from the epistle to the hebrews so here it says bringing that forward it says they are the first fruits you see right there the first fruits so in order to overstand the first fruits in its true 
Berit Chadasha, New Testament, Adis Kidan sense, one must have a good groundation, a foundation. This is why Robain or Yeshua was, was always saying to the Pharisees, right? Like we got to say to a lot of these Christian Pharisees, you know what I mean? Um, have you not read in the law, Ha Torah? Have you not read in the prophets? Have you not read, in other words, in the Hebrew scriptures? So a lot of things you see in Christianity, this is why we call a lot of what we witness in Christianity counterfeit Christianity. It pretends to be so, but they cut off, right? They cut off the pattern. They cut off the groundation. They cut off the pattern. And they introduce a lot of goyim, heathen, other nations things. So they are the first fruits, la Yahuwah, to Jehovah. Right. So here, 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 this is the essence, right? This is the essence right here, just in these verses right here. Right? Just showing these particular verses right here, right? Especially verses like 15 and 16 directly. But for verses 15 and 16, they continue from where we have like verse 9 and 10. In verse 9 and 10 in Leviticus chapter 23, we have, we have the feast of the first fruits, Bikorim, Bikorim, right? So here we're at the fourth of the seven. So we're going to have to go over this for some ones and ones because first of all, we have seven feasts of Jehovah, right? Those seven feasts, and they occur in three seasons. So it's still the same seven, but those seven can be placed and should be placed at three different times of the year. Three at the beginning, then middle way, we have harvest as we have right here. And then we have at the end of the year, on the seventh month, right, at the end of the ecclesiastical, the churchical, the Hebrew churchical year, we could say the holy year, at the seventh month, then we have the last three. So those seven feasts and festivals of Yahuwah, of Jehovah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, they occur in three times. So when it says three times in the year, it's referring to these seven. Right, so here we are moving from the third, have moved from the third, here moving to the fourth, and we're counting the time. It's about counting the time, right? So here, 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 with this connection, with this right here, here is here's the groundation for now how do we observe harvest since we are not literally counting the growth from the land because we have not come into the physical land. Right, but we have come into the spiritual land, right? That spiritual land, that consciousness, and thus the connection with the words and parables, the Mishle, Mishle, Mishle Robeno Yeshua HaMoshiach, the parables of our rabbi Yeshua HaMoshiach, especially in Matthew chapter 13 regarding the seed. The seed and the sower is the primary parable. It's the parable of parables. It's the first of the parables that he gives. The parables, the proverbs, or the allegories. But the allegories are instructional. Right? So that's the groundation right there concerning the seed. Because now once one can understand the seed in the second of the two aspects, then truly one can fulfill right, the harvest or Pentecost right, in the new covenant sense. With that faith, Bashem Yeshua HaMushiach, to the glory of Yahuwah Eloheinu, Elohim Ha'ab. So here we have, but the fruit of the Spirit. So we're not looking at the fruit of the land, speaking of the land, the ground, the earthly ground, the physical ground, but we're looking at the metaphysical ground right here. This is concerning the meta cycle, the metaphysical ground, but the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, for those. 49 plus one day, right? In Acts of the Apostles. So these are important scriptures. I'm pointing to Acts of the Apostles because look at Pentecost, study Pentecost. We're going to go over this in the podcast on Rastafari Israelites. Check out the YouTube Rastafari Israelites, right? As well as on the Rastafari sabbatical, seeing that here we are completing the sixth, right? And about to fulfill the seventh, right? Um, sabbatical, the next Shabuah, the next seven days coming forward. So here we're at the cusp of the TJIF, right, to fulfill the six, right, the six Shabbat, the six of the seven Shabbat, seven times seven, the two sevens. Here's the true meaning for Rastafari Israelites of the two sevens clashing. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness 
goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such, right? Against such, the word reads, there is no law, there is no Torah in that sense, against. There's only a Torah in favor of. That's what it means when it says, against such there is no law, against such. So there is no, because the law is Torah. Torah is direction, instruction. So there's no direction, instruction against these fruit, right? Against these fruit. How many, how many fruit do we have here? We have nine, if we're correctly, nine. Love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. Faith, meekness, temperance. We have nine. So the nine fruits, this is what is called the nine fruits right, of the Spirit. The nine fruits of the Spirit. Right? Remember the parable, the proverb, the mashal of the sower. And the sower went forth to sow. So here's where we check ourselves. This is what we do. This is the real, we say, the spirituality, the real metaphysical spirituality. Here, even as we counting the Omer, what are we counting? We're counting the growth. How is it growing? In the first of the two truths, in the physical, the temporal sense, we'll be counting the growth of the crops from our land. But crops can only grow from our land if we have sowed, if we have tilled and cultivated the land and we have sowed seed in the land. In other words, if you don't work the land, there'll be no growth. And the same applies to the Hebrew metaphysical spirituality. We're looking at the Hebrew metaphysical spirituality right here. Basham Yeshua HaMoshiach. Right? In that authority of the name of the Bain Elohim Chayim. So against none of these is there any Torah direction instruction. We have direction instruction. All the direction instruction is in favor of these nine fruits. These nine kinds of fruit. Right? So as we count the Omer, as we count the growth, according to the Brit Hadasha, Brit Covenant Hadasha, new, renewed, the new covenant, the renewed covenant, the Adis Kidan, we're counting, we're checking ourselves. How is Jah love growing in me in this season? How is Jah joy, not just my love or my joy, but his, the seed, how's that seed of the word? How have I sown the word in my conscience, right? my consciousness, in the ground, in the ground of my consciousness? How have I sowed that word? Even, not just how have I sowed that word, have I cultivated and tilled the ground? Here we're pointing, Habarim, fellow disciples, Talmudim, we're pointing to Matthew chapter 13. Go study Matthew chapter 13, in particular, the parable of the sower. Remember, there was, what, three, four kinds of ground? There was by the wayside ground. There was a stony ground. There was a thorny ground. But only in the good ground, right? So what separates, what differ differentiates, right, the wayside and the stony ground and the thorny ground? This is why Matthew chapter 13, Chabarim, What's, what's the words of Robain Adonain? What's the words of Yeshua HaNotri to Ainai? What is the words of the Bain Elohim Chaim, HaMoshiach, Bain Elohim Chaim to us on this? Right? He expresses this parable, and in the parable, he shows us that the key thing is how do we prepare the ground? Have we prepared the ground? That's the most important thing before even sowing a single seed. Because what happens is that many ones and ones, seed might, you might sow seed or seed might be sown into ones, but the ground is already wayside, right? It needs tracks. It doesn't have proper tracks, right? If you understand agriculture, here's where it's important for us to understand agriculture. And here's one of the corollary benefits as we begin to understand these basic things, in order to understand spirituality of HaMoshiach in the Brit Chadasha, in the New Covenant type, even the Old Testament type, we have to understand certain other basic things about those basic areas of people, activity, and life. This is why we say that HaTorah, right, the Torah goes beyond just the Western Gentile so-called religious ideology. You hear people talk about religious 
you know, and what is religious or this is religious or that is religious. But this goes beyond just the so-called religious, you know, the so-called religious um, ideology, you know, and we're getting to true spirituality. Right, so these things we're going to have to put together, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, you know, these basics, you know, some of these basics right here. That's why I'm pointing to some of these areas of scripture, right, and would like to go through this, you know, more point by point and even on the broadcast, the podcast, to be able to, you know, even take on certain, you know, questions or inquiries specifically on topic specifically on topic because there's a lot of th different things we can talk about and we need to reason on and to talk about but this is first and foremost right here let's just do this right here brothers and sisters um because while we are recording this right here we also are getting ready for tonight's podcast as well but the holy spirit just reminded us that it'll be good for us to have something over this you know time right here seeing that we have one more Shabuah, one more seven days you know to bring forward the practical some of the practical applications how do we as israelites right and as hebrews Yehudim, that have faith in the king of kings christ and moshia yeshua right how do we observe right how do we observe harvest in this season in this time seeing that it's overstanding as Yeshua, when Yeshua said to his disciples, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. They went to the feast and they came back hungry because they didn't understand the word, the spirit of the word. They were looking at the letter of the law. They did not understand the spirit of the law. So they came back hungry. Hopefully this would not be the same for I and I, right, in this harvest time. As this year, this season, this year, this time, the harvest time. May we have... Right, whether it's 30, right, whether it's 60, right, or whether it's 100. Remember in that same parable, the same parable in Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is the next important key. Because once we have the parable of the sower, and we understand the parable of the sower in context with the basic principles of Ha Torah, right, and we understand basic principles of agriculture. Because what the Messiah shows in Matthew chapter 13 is the correspondence, how he was using the natural examples, the earthly examples to show us heavenly and spiritual things, as well as showing us the real inner application, right? So that seed is that word of the kingdom, right? Ha Torah, the Psalms, the scriptures, the Brit Chadash, you know, is that word, all of the words concerning the kingdom, the kingdom of the King of Kings Christ, Basham Yeshua HaMoshia, right? That's what, the, that's what the seed is. It says the seed is that word of the kingdom. And every kind of ground heard it, but the only kind of ground that could bear fruit was the good ground. And in the natural sense, the only kind of ground that's good is ground that is worked. This is why the word says to work out your salvation. Why our brother Rab Shaul, the apostle Paulo, said about working out our salvation. Because this is the work, even in season, out of season. Where we check in ourselves. We're looking at ourselves. You know, how much fruit now as the harvest is coming forward. How much love based on that seed of his word has grown in my consciousness and my spirit, right? In the I spirit and our spirit. How much joy, how much peace, right? How much long suffering, right? How much gentleness, how much goodness, how much faith, how much meekness, how much temperance, and temperance is self-control, right? Has grown up in us, right? So it's like we're taking the, say we're taking the fruit in this spiritual harvest to the market, right? And someone wanted to, you know, um, partake of some of the fruit that you now have at, at the market. How much love is there? You know, how much joy is there? How much peace is there? Right? And it doesn't mean that all of us is going to have, you know, 100%. Even in the parable in Matthew chapter 13, it points out that, you know, some 30-fold. Right, you know, some sixty fold, and some ones can keep it one hundred. This all bespeaks about how well we are cultivating 
right? Cultivating, right? To cultivate. How well we are cultivating our own Christ consciousness, the real Moshiach mindfulness, the real Christos consciousness. How well are we cultivating the ground, the ground of our being? To put it in um, what may be called psychological terms, the ground of our being. And here's the deep thing. And we begin to find as we really truly study the scripture the correct way, it embraces all of the best, even in these so-called high sciences and other sciences that the world give us their version of psychology. This is speaking of our soul, our soul, our spirit, our mind, right? Also taking into context our feelings, our emotions, right? But this is all based, right, on the, the true good news, right? Remember, the good news right is the good news is the gospel of the kingdom again the true good news right is the gospel of the kingdom and when we look at matthew and study matthew chapter 13 so here we're looking at galatians right galatians go over here galatians 5 22 to 23 right this is another way of presenting it right so one can get an overview the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So based on that seed of the sower, Yeshua HaMoshiach, based on that seed, right, how much love is growing, right? How much love grew up, is growing in this harvest? How much love can you take, can you bring to the harvest? How much joy, how much peace, how much long-suffering, how much kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all right? And see, remember, the seed is his seed right so that means the seed that he gives us on love right is based on his love based on his joy based on his peace this should make things you know much more easier right and the whole connection right here when we're speaking about the holy spirit when we're speaking about the upper room of zion when we're speaking about this particular season and this particular time you know um now there's the nine fruits and there's the seven gifts Right, so here we're just speaking right to the fruits. Right, we're going to also address you know even more on the nine gifts. Right, some refer to as like the nine gifts. Right, so there's some interesting numbers that we have the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5 22 to 23. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, we have 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 11. Right. And then even right here in Acts chapter 2, verse 28, repent, have a change of mind, think different, be baptized, get immersed, right? Every one of you in the name, right? By Shem, right? Yeshua HaMoshiach for the forgiveness of your falling short, your forfeitures, your missing the mark, your sins, and you will receive. You will what? Kabbalah. You will receive the receiving of the gift. Right, this receiving of the gift. That's the main point here in this season. That receiving of the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. Now to those who have received, right, or Amen, they credit and admit that they have received. Then those of us who admit that we have received the Holy Spirit, it's important for us now to count the fruits of the Holy Spirit. See, that's the key, right? The Holy Spirit, right, is the key. And as the word says in Romans chapter 8, I think it's verse 28, and his spirit, right, the Ruach HaKadosh, his spirit, the spirit of Adonai, Adon, Adonai, right, of HaAdon, testifies with our spirit. Because man, the human being is a trinity. Man is a triunity. Man is a trinity. Man has spirit, soul, and the carbon organic structure is called a body. So man is a trinity right so man has we have spirit so the word tells us his spirit testifying with our spirit all right so we got to be still to hear whether we hear that testimony of his spirit testifying with our spirit that we are the b'nai elohim that we are the sons we are the children of Elohim, the true good, the true God, because according to John chapter 1, the gospel according to John, right, we are to receive that authority, that power, right, to become children, right, that power to become B'nai Elohim, 
sons of the power, sons of children of the Almighty. So more on this right here, brothers and sisters. There's more to share on this, not to get into the full of full right now, but even just some of the, you know, some of the basics right here. When we're speaking about the fruits of the Holy Spirit, right? How's it growing, brothers and sisters? How's it going? How's it growing in this season right here? As we see that Shabuot, right? The harvest is coming, 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 coming here in the season, here in the time. So here's the one of the main verses in Galatians. So Leviticus chapter 23, right? Verses like 10 to verse like 18, right? Matthew, right? Matthew's gospel chapter 13, right? Focusing on the parable, right? The proverb, the allegory, the allegory of the sower, the parable of the sower. And then here, 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 right? Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. For right now, my brothers and sisters, just some immediately point to reference. We really want to highly encourage ones and ones to check out more on the parable, to read and study Matthew chapter 13. Remember, it was the parable, he spoke to the multitudes and parables, but he gave the keys to the disciples. So that's important if we are in this, in the discipline, in his discipline as disciples, right? We will receive those keys. So everyone probably have heard about the parable of the sower, but how many really know the parable of the sower? Understand the applied Hebrew spiritual messianic science. We're touching on the messianic science, the application, right? The application according to the true type, right? So right here, 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 brothers and sisters, just giving a couple of different translations of it, right? Basically, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. So even if we lack in these fruits, it could be because we, we might lack the Holy Spirit, right? And if we lack, <coughs> if we lack, all we need to do is to ask. Ask and it shall be given. Right? <coughs> Knock and the door shall be opened. Right? Well, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. Let me let me just take a little bit of sip right here. Mm. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, you know? The flesh needed, needed a little bit of um, refreshment right there for the vocal. So, yes, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So, if we lack any of those, it may be because we lack the Holy Spirit. And therefore, you know, we need to ask, you know, to receive and even now, now, now is a good time and season according to his way, truth, and life. Because it says, against such there is no law. There's no Torah. There's no direction, instruction against such. Right? Ask, you know, and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Yes, brothers and sisters, right here, here, here. Might leave this one on. This is good because it points to a couple of key uh, verses. Like on love, for example. And you shall love, you must love Yahweh Loheka, he who be who he be, your Elohim, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. On peace, may Yahuwah show favor towards you and give you shalom. Peace, Numbers 6 and 26. Faithfulness, great is your faithfulness. Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 23. So as he is faithful, we should become more full of his faith. Joy, on joy, my heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in song, song, music, keeping it Levitical, Psalm 28 and 7. Goodness, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahuwah. Jehovah for Iva, Psalm 23, verse 6. Gentleness, pursue a Jah like life, a Jah like liberty, an Elohim like liberty, among, along with faith, 
along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. 1 Timothy 6, 11. Patience. Meanwhile, the saints stand passionately patient, passionately patient, keeping Yahweh Jehovah's commands, staying faithful to Yeshua. Here we have Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, the message. This is the message. Meanwhile, the saints, the, the Chabarim, the Hasidim, the Kedoshim stand passionately patient keeping Elohim's commands, staying faithful to Yeshua, Revelation 14, 12, the message. Self-control. A person without self-control, which is temperance, is like a house with its doors and windows knocked out. Proverbs chapter 25, 28, self-control, one of the fruits of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, and kindness. But the, the fruit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here, here, here. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. So yes, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, this is what it's all about right here. Right here, according to the reason for the season. Yes, I, Rastafari. Like, share, and subscribe. Check us out, L-O-J, right, dot O-R-G, L-O-J-S, Lion of Judah Society, dot O-R-G. Also, Rastafari Israelites on the YouTube, the streaming, the podcast. Also, here, here, Rastafari Yehudi. Yes, I, praise be his majesty. I be fruitful. I, yes, I, bring forth the fruit, the fruit of the truth. Shalom Rastafari.